Hello, everyone. Welcome back. My name is Ben Jacobson. I'm the digital marketing strategist here at Page One Power. Uh, we're back with another episode of SEO from Home. Um, if For those of you who haven't been with us before, our goal with this series is to provide you guys with some valuable and hopefully interesting information uh, while many of us are continuing to work from home. Um, today, we're, jo we're joined by Joelle Irvin, who is an executive growth marketer in Montreal, Canada. Um, today, we're going to be recording this episode, so if you guys want to watch this later, uh, we will have that recording up typically in about 24 to 48 hours. Um, all of those previous episodes, if you haven't seen these before, are going to be up on our website at pageonepower.com. We're also going to be live tweeting today, so if you guys want to try participating that way, you can use hashtag SEO from home and tag at page one power and at Joel Irvin. Um, today we're gonna to be talking about customer shopping experiences. We're gonna be talking about how we can optimize this through um, image optimization. We're gonna be talking about reducing friction. Um, Joel's gonna be presenting on a lot of really cool ideas and how you can help your e-commerce company by reducing some of these roadblocks. So without any further ado, um, I'll let Joel go ahead and take it from here. Go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit and tell us more about what we can expect today. Okay, cool. So I'm going to actually just put up the uh, slide deck. So give me one second. Can everybody see that? Looks good. Looks good Perfect. here. Okay, awesome. So, um, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself. Um, my name is Joelle Irvin, uh, like Ben said, and I'm from Montreal, Canada. I have over a decade of experience on the agency and brand side, and I grow winning growth strategies for B2B, B2C, and e-commerce brands. I've been spending a lot of my time lately uh, creating content and speaking at events to help brands like yourselves either adapt your strategies or get online to um, you know, benefit or to to do well during these complicated times. So I'm gonna start with a little story. Um, so I've been living with this light fixture um, from the previous owners, you know, since we moved in. And I finally wanted to update it and change it to, you know, my personal taste. So my first instinct is to Google it. And I, I enter dining room chandelier. Google shows me a bunch of ads, shows me lots of images, but none of them are quite right. So I go back to Google and I enter geometric dining room chandelier. And the results look a little bit better. And oh, look, there it is. It's my chandelier. See how that just happened? It went from, you know, the, my, what I wanted to get to my chandelier. As soon as I saw the image, it became mine. And so I clicked on the image and I see it there. I see the price, I see the ratings and I get more information. So I click on it again and oh, utter disappointment. It's out of stock. It's just, you know, it's like, okay, what am I gonna do now? And I have to start my search all over again. So what's happening here is that, um, Sometimes you find what you're looking for, but you can't actually get to, you know, the ratings or the price or finding more information or finding out if they deliver. Um, both Google and Pinterest have capabilities to help with this customer experience, but not a lot of brands are taking advantage. So given the current global climate and the changes to economy, it's safe to say there will be lasting changes to consumer behavior. That being said, I'll be sharing strategies, tech solutions, and examples of brands of all sizes um, to help you adapt your strategies, especially for the small to medium-sized brands who want to adapt to improve their e-commerce strategies. So today we'll cover um, improving organic discovery through visual content strategy and product optimization. Um, from search and image search and shopping and discovery on Google to search and explore pins, board style guides, and Pinterest lens 
There are many ways to find new ideas, get inspired, and find products on these two platforms. Personalizing experiences for when your customers are searching and comparing is also quite important. Um, you want to make sure that it doesn't just end it when they find the product. So these are you know, some ways to help, you, help your customers uh, get to where they want to go. And finally, helping your customers make the right decision and easily buy things when they're ready to buy. But you know, there are many factors that come into play here, like price and color and delivery options. But the user flow and the overall customer experience are also as important, if not even more important. If your customer can't select a product or get to the checkout page, they might be, um, they might be frustrated or discouraged. You might even get ghosted somewhere along the way. So let's take a step back for a minute. The best way to inform your strategy and understand consumer intent is through data. Not only looking at your own analytics, but also looking at what's out there currently in the wild. So let's dive into the numbers. Visuals play a huge part in how people find things online. Google has approximately 92% of the search market share globally. And according to MozCast, 27% of the SERP features are image search results. So not to mention all the other features that you can find in search, you know, like the featured snippets and, and video, et cetera. Image, images really play a huge part in everything. And the May Google Core update shook things up quite a bit. Many people noticed that Amazon, Etsy, and social networks were really winning here. Um, you can see from this search result, there were actually two Pinterest results for the same query. So some people, some people may ask, why Pinterest? Pinterest may have smaller user base than Google or Amazon, but it's growing. They have about 367 million monthly active users, which is now more than Twitter and Snapchat. 47% of Pinterest users are there to find and search for products. I mean, that's amazing. And interestingly, weekly pinners are three times more likely to click through to a retailer site than, other, than from other social networks. And did you know that 72% say that Pinterest inspires them to shop when they aren't actually looking to buy anything? So why don't you take this advantage and try and help them find that perfect thing they didn't even know they wanted? On Pinterest in March, there was a huge spike in searches for immediate needs like kids' activities, easy recipes, and even mass making. But future planning searches are now on the rise, including event and summer planning, finding outfits, travel, and even finding wedding dresses. April numbers show that their activity is up 80% year over year, and an increase of 44% in pinners using the shopping features. More people are shopping online according to Global Web Index. And the need for same or next day delivery is on the rise. And it's expected to even go higher post pandemic. These are just a few things to think about when you're developing your strategy. So let's dive in right into the opportunities for brands. 62% of the young people would like to be able to search by image and 58% of them would like to be able to click directly to buy, to buy a product. Visual search makes it easy for when your customers want to find what they're looking for, but really don't know what something is called, when they're looking for a particular style, or when things are just way too long and complicated to explain with text. It's basically like Shazam for images. And augmented reality is also a valuable tool to improve the shopper experience. Google has a development platform called AR Core. They have been working with creators and partners to create helpful, entertaining, and engaging AR experiences for apps. Several brands have already seen value in this. 
not only from search, but also through integrations. If the technology exists, why not use it? Either optimize content for where your audience is already hanging out, or create something custom for your own platform through partnerships. So if you, establish, if you partner with an established partner, uh, they can help you integrate this R AR directly into your platform. There's a couple of examples that I really like, and one of them is that Levi's partnered with Pinterest to create the Find Your Levi Style platform. And there you could actually fill out a visual quiz and then it customizes this curated Pinterest board with your personal style, you know, specifically for you. And the New York Times partnered with Google to create this cool AR feature where if you hover your, your um, phone over the cover, you can actually get more backstory into what's happening. This could be really interesting for in-store experiences moving forward. Burberry also worked with Google to create an AR shopping tool for two of their products. This experience is currently only available in the US. I couldn't actually test it out myself, but it looks really, really cool. I feel like this also could be interesting for many brands, uh, like in the home decor, fashion, automobile, real estate, education, many other industries, to help them you know, bridge that gap between the in-store and the digital. And physical spaces really have had a rough few years, not to mention the current situations and restrictions that are still happening in many places right now. Um, many stores have even had to shut down. It's, you know, it's very, very sad. But those that augment in-store experiences are really the ones that are going to be successful once things you know, normalize. Brands like Dior and Lego have created these virtual store environments, um, which, you know, very cool in concept, but a lot of these companies are missing the keyword here, and that's experience. Uh, I visited the Dior virtual store, and it was very cool and lifelike. However, you know, I couldn't actually easily buy something, which, which could be very, you know, disappointing for a consumer. So unless a virtual store can allow someone to easily find what they're looking for, provide more information, and actually buy something, it may not be worth the time. There are other um, experiences that have been made over the past few years. Um, these ones add value, and I think this is something that is really important when creating something like this. Alibaba brought fashion AI mirrors to their stores to allow people to uh, get recommendations for accessories or other colors when they're trying things on. And Amazon created a tech enabled mirror to allow you to project an outfit onto yourself rather to, than to physically try something on. And pin codes can be displayed in store for customers to scan with Pinterest lens so they can find out more or to see integrated curated boards for those things like DIY, for example. Home Depot and Nordstrom both used these and were quite happy with the outcome. With the majority of Pinterest searches being unbranded, people are more open to finding out about brands and products they've never heard of before. This is great news for smaller and lesser known brands. And Gardner says that by next year, e-commerce brands that integrate voice or visual search technologies into their platform will increase profits by up to 30%. That's really quite cool. You know, we'll see what, we'll see what happens. And now let's look at what's new. So in April, Google announced that it's now offering free Google shopping listings uh, in the US. They say it will be expanded globally by the end of the year. This is a great opportunity for shoppers as it will diversify the products in the shopping feed. It's also great for visibility for retailers and commerce brands, and it's added visibility for current, you know, current advertisers. And although this isn't directly tied to e-commerce, I think it's important to know that Google is continuously innovating their Google Lens product, um, which, you know, image recognition is something that's huge, and I think it'll play a huge part in e-commerce moving forward. Google Lens has always focused, focused a lot on the practical. In April, it released several new features to help people working from home, 
you know, some of them is copied to computer, exploring new concepts or learning how to pronounce things in another language. My favorite is the copy to computer. It's basically like an airdrop for words. And Pinterest also has an AR feature that was released earlier this year. It allows you to try on different shades of lipstick. This is one small thing that they're doing in AR. I really hope that they expand this out to other uh, products in the home decor and fashion industry because that tied in with visual search and shopping will really, really make the difference. They also partnered with Shopify recently um, and this allows merchants to easily integrate their shopping feeds directly in uh, with Pinterest catalogs. It's primed to help e-commerce businesses in the US and Canada increase product discovery and sales. Shopify also has introduced several new ways to shop in April to help smaller brands get discovered. You can shop from boards, from search, from pins, and from style guides. I really love the style guides. If you look at the last example there, uh, mid-century living room ideas, and then you can look at look at rooms, get inspired, and then actually shop by products. You can actually select different products and shop that way. Um, and it's really making it easier, easier for users to find what they're looking for. They also introduced uh, the editorial content by influencers and tastemakers. This was just a couple weeks ago. And this is basically that rich content that a lot of the SEOs were complaining about on Twitter. Uh, that, you know, with the May update, they are actually starting to create some rich content, um, you know, editorial content, video, etc. And they've also partnered with several top publishing partners like Refinery29, Domino, and Harper's Bazaar to actually get some real influencers and tastemakers in here. They also will be sharing new resources for creators and small to medium sized businesses. Uh, to create, design, edit, and publish pins on the platform. And there will be free courses on the Pinterest Academy for this. And last but not least, this week, Pinterest launched the Shop tab uh, with visual search directly from the Pinterest camera. This is yet another way they're making it easier for their customer or their audience to find what they're looking for and easily purchase it. All right. So how do we optimize images for e-commerce? We're gonna cover four areas. Verification, optimizing image and product data, visual content strategy, and tracking topics and trends. So no matter how your customers search for products online, images are a huge component. People want to see and understand what they're getting before they buy it. And search engines need to understand those things and how they're related to your brand and how the products are related so that your customers can actually, you know, find what they're looking for when they're looking for them. Verifying your brand is a huge part of that. So if your brand already has a, a knowledge panel, you can claim it. This is something that not many brands know about or haven't um, taken advantage of. And Google provides instructions that are quite easy to follow. This will help search engines understand your brand and connect it to all those other wonderful things like your brand with your products, with your partners, et cetera. And once you've claimed your knowledge panel, you can provide feedback to Google directly and make suggestions on the featured image, on the content, and if there's any brands or things that are not related to your product, you can actually um, request for things to be disassociated, which is quite nice because sometimes there's a brand that has almost the same name that you have. Um, and then it will connect everything within the larger knowledge graph. Most of the time, so it, if you do not have a knowledge panel, um, I'm going to also provide some tips on how you can get there. So most of the time an entity only gets a knowledge panel once it has a Wikipedia page. For this to happen, your entity needs to be in the news. It needs to be on reputable third party sites. And um, you want to make sure that you're not sharing it with just any random sites. 
Uh, please note that you can't write your own Wikipedia page. You should have an unbiased uh, Wikipedia editor create a page. And lastly, um, all the channels related to your brand should be connected on your website through structured data. This will all take time. This is not a quick fix. This is the long game. So be patient and don't meddle with the process. Uh, let it happen naturally and you know, build it up over time and it will happen. Pinterest also has a verification process for entities. However, if you're a brand, it would be best to apply for the Verified Merchant Program, which was uh, launched in March. It helps shoppers discover and buy from vetted brands on the platform. It's free to join and makes your brand stand out. You get access to some cool stuff like data before everybody else gets it, the shop tab and shopper experiences. And the verification process is actually quite simple. It's not complicated. They really just want to vet you to make sure that you're providing an awesome experience for their audience. So it's time to optimize. Let's dig right in. Without realizing it, many brands are missing out on opportunities to be found online and to deliver awesome experiences to their shoppers. Visual search is also not perfect. Um, lenses can also on occasion auto select the wrong focal point, categorize a person instead of a product, or display items that are currently out of stock. All of these things leave users frustrated. So let's start by understanding what we need to do. One of the top reasons web pages are slow, it, it, most likely a lot of the time it's images. There are lots of tools out there that you can use to check out uh, what's happening on your site and to audit it, test it. These are some great tools depending on your needs, so check those out. And the Test My Site tool has a cool ROI tool so if you need to go back to your boss and convince them on making these optimization changes to speed up your site, you can actually plug in things like um, your current site speed, the monthly visitors, conversion rates, and average order value. And it'll say, it'll provide you an estimate of the increase on annual revenue uh, relating to the, the changes in speed that you make to your site. It's actually quite cool and uh, I think it's worth checking out. And once you've audited, there are a few ways to reduce your page bloat. When it comes to images, you can compress the images using your Save for Web in Photoshop or use a tool like Optimizilla. Um, I'm not a huge fan of plugins, but if you have like a gazillion e-commerce product pages and you need to do something quickly, look into it and see what you're comfortable with. Um, make sure to enable caching on your server and using a CDN can also definitely increase the speed on your site. All of these things are very, very top level blanket statements. So please consult with your developer or your SEO uh, and your team to make sure that everything makes sense within your strategy and, and how to actually implement all of these things properly. On-page SEO is also very important uh, for accessibility, to help your users find what they're looking for, to help search engines understand your content. Um, it's, you know, it's something that you need to invest some time in. Don't leave those alt texts uh, blank. And this is not my expertise, but if you're planning on uh, updating your alt text and your um, all your tags and everything at scale. There are AI solutions. There's Vision AI from the Google Cloud. And um, uh, there's this really awesome article from Hamlet Batista on Search Engine Journal on using Python to generate text from images. So if, if you're really techy and or you have this awesome developer, check that out. Uh, it's definitely worth a read. And there'll be some trial and error, but it could be worth it in the long run. And make sure that your images are indexed by submitting an image site map. Basic product data from the shopping feed helps image and visual search technology understand your content. 
You can sync product data from your database directly to Google Merchant Center and Pinterest catalogs. Remember that if you do sync your data with the Google Merchant Center, you have access to the free shopping listings if you're in the US and later on in the year for the rest of the world. And you may have noticed in that first image that I did a search for Warby Parker frames and got Ray-Ban results. So if you're not paying attention and you're not optimizing properly, you could be missing out. There's a lot of missed opportunities there. Structured data, unlike many rich results, rich product images are where you can benefit, benefit from traffic, um, potentially with quick sales. And in the product description, I highly recommend including your USPs. Like if you offer free shipping, put it in there. It may be the deciding factor in the click. Rich pins can reduce friction by facilitating the pin to purchase process. And this can be done for lifestyle content for your category pages, or of course for your product, page, uh, your product pages and product images. Um, for products, it will reduce potential frustration by only displaying products that are still available. So as soon as something's out of stock, it disappears from the feed or it'll say out of stock. And to be honest, I wish this is something that most e-commerce sites would do because that's the one thing that makes me crazy. <laughs> so, uh, visual content strategy. Your product images should, should really be on brand. They should be consistent and they should look and feel like your brand. And they should be clutter free. They should also have a clear focal point and the product should be in the foreground. Context is super important. So even if it's not part of the image, you want to make sure the text around your image gives it, um, you know, gives it more, it adds value. And you can also see here that they don't even mention anything about delivery on this page, but the image says it all. Uh, the text surrounding your images should be relevant and helpful. And of course, engage people with everyday lifestyle shots when it makes sense. Images should be high quality and shot in good lighting. Ensure the right balance of quality to image size. You don't want to end up with a fuzzy, fuzzy low quality image to show off your very expensive products, for example. And only use ping for vector images or images that are under uh, 16 colors. Use JPEGs for full color and photography images. If you use stock photography, try and use ones that are not overused and make sure to customize them to your brand and look and feel. Include multiple angles of each product image so your customer can properly evaluate the product before they buy. And if any image does not add value to the experience, get rid of it. You don't need it. Oops. So tracking topics and trends. This is one of my favorite things to do. Um, stay on top of what's happening, which topics are relevant to your audience. You want to think beyond keywords. Um, Google has a million different tools out there. It has Google Trends, Think with Google, uh, Google Search Console, and this came out uh, recently. It's the rising retail trends. So you can actually go into your niche area and see what's actually trending in, in that area. Pinterest also has a bunch of tools. They have the monthly trend reports, which I love. You can actually see like an increase month over month or year over year of certain things like, you know, waffle burgers and, uh, you know, like all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, one specifically, so there's one also that's specifically related to uh, inspiration during challenging times. Definitely worth looking at. That's where I got some of those stats from the beginning of the presentation. Also worth checking out is Answer the Public and uh, Basuma, one of my favorite tools. It's great for you know, getting new ideas for content, but also monitoring your own brand and backlinks. And they just came out with a keyword tool. I uh, haven't checked it out yet, but it's worth looking at. And also think about what's next. Uh, visual sentiment analysis, ideally used to understand emotions of users on social media. 
and adapt content and images so they're timely and relevant to your audience needs for discovery and engagement. So we covered a lot. There's a lot of stuff there. Take some time to decide how you'd like to adapt your strategy. It's important not only, um, it's, it's important not to do everything all at once uh, and think about, you know, your immediate goals and your goals for the future. Given the current situation and uncertainty, um, you know, these are things that you have to think about, you know, long term and short term. If you want to uh, think about what we talked about today, it's important to remember improved discovery through verification, defining and implementing a solid visual content strategy, set your goals um, and optimize your product data, personalize experiences and set goals based on your audience's intent and also the topics and trends, sync your database with Google's Merchant Center and Pinterest catalogs to reduce friction and allow your customers to take action. So thank you so much for attending. I uh, hope you can benefit from what we covered today. Um, uh, you know, hopefully you can quickly adapt some of these things and also you know, work on some of the things on the long term. Please connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter and uh, check out my brand new Instagram and my also brand new newsletter. Uh, I'm available for any questions if you have any. Awesome, thank you, Joelle. That was fantastic. I think that was uh, I like that that was a very like holistic approach. I think uh, so often that uh, specifically inside of some of these more intricate spaces, like we have the best intentions and we start setting up so many different areas, but we don't completely f complete the, the loop. And I think that's kind of what, at least for me, I took away from that is being able to have all of those pieces working together to where they're, um, you know, they're all working towards that same end goal, which is awesome. Um, we'll leave it open for just a few more moments here. Uh, if any of you guys have any questions, definitely pop those in uh, for Joelle here. Um, again, like I mentioned, we do have this episode recorded. So if you guys had to step out for any of it and you want to check it out, um, that will be up on our website. Uh, again, about 24, 48 hours typically, also on our YouTube channel. Um, Joel, that was fantastic. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being able to pop on here with us. Thanks, Ben. It looks like we're good to go. If you guys do come up with any other questions or you want to connect with Joelle, we'll have her information posted as well. And we'll tag her on Twitter as well as any of the other social media. Uh, so it looks like uh, we're all good there. Thanks again, Joelle. Thanks, have Ben. Thanks, everyone. Time. See you guys.